Welcome, everyone. Today is episode four of our Orchid po podcasts um, on domestic violence, and um, I hope you guys are having a um, a good uh, good weather uh, because Toronto has been hit with like a rain uh, storm. Uh, so I think May looks kind of bleak, <laughs> and we're not very excited about that. Um, so welcome, everyone, uh, to our viewers who have been watching our programs. Uh, you're familiar with where we're at. We have been touching base on domestic violence with our beautiful uh, speaker and our, our leading lady of one of the founding organizations on the elimination of violence against women, Johanna Zakur. Uh, she's been up to amazing work in, in Lebanon and is raising awareness on what's happening in terms of domestic violence beginning in Lebanon and the rest of the world. Um, so welcome again to this ORCID podcast, and today we are going to be shining light on a very important topic, which are the children. So welcome, Johanna. Hello, Saha, and uh, hello everyone who's uh, uh, witnessing and uh, listening to us as we enter our fourth uh, session on domestic violence. I hope we were able to put light uh, on a lot of issues that were not clear before how to recognize domestic violence. Maybe some of you had an eye opening and tried to make a change in your lives or in someone else's. And maybe some of you are still hesitant to do anything. Uh, I hope today's topic on the effect of domestic violence on children uh, we will all realize how hard and dangerous it is for children to witness domestic violence and the effects on their health throughout their lives. So, mm -hmm. And this is a very important to me and I believe to every woman who doesn't realize that what she is going through and suffering uh, is affecting her children and her family. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I'm sure this is going to resonate with a lot of people, not only if you have experienced this yourself, uh, but you may know somebody. Um, what, I've, what I've experienced, uh, especially through my coaching with, with many of my clients, is that everybody's under the impression that the kids don't notice. Um, and the second part is many of the women stick around because of the kids. And it's like, you know, on both ends, there's just so much to talk about. So the reason why today's topic is so important is because it's kind of like a silent um, form of effect. It's silent. Everybody's under the impression that they're too young, they don't understand what's happening, or they can't hear us. Um, and more so, that if I stick around, even if they're not familiar with it, then I'm going to stick around just for their sake. So we're going to be shining light on all of the different effects of domestic violence on children. Um, so, Johanna, let's just start by um, talking about, you know, what, what would the symptoms be of children who have witnessed domestic abuse? Uh, the physical symptoms along their emotional and behavioral state of despair, these children may complain uh, of general aches and pain such as headaches, stomach aches, you know, a lot of kids, sometimes we, uh, we think because uh, the child is afraid of school, but it could be that. And also it could be uh, of things that he's witnessing at home. They may also have irritable and irregular bowel uh, habits. They may have problems with bedwetting all of a sudden, you know, especially if the child is uh, four years and above and things started all over. Uh, these complaints have, have uh, been associated with depressive uh, disorders in children, a common emotional effect of the domestic violence. Uh, children who witness violence also may appear nervous and, uh, as previously mentioned, and have short attention spans. These children may show symptoms as children who have been diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactive disorder. On the reverse, these children may show symptoms of fatigue and constant tiredness. They may fall asleep in school. That's normal due to the lack of sleep at home, you know. Much of the night may be spent listening or witnessing violence within the home. 
And uh, I want listener to be, listeners to be attentive to what the signs the children show, especially teachers, you know, those teachers who have so many kids around in school and they can judge or uh, misdiagnose the child as uh, bad behavior. But if they check really well and, uh, and ask and be, be open-minded, you know, <clears throat> and especially family members, it's not necessary that every child shows all those signs that we're talking. It could be one sign that is affecting the child, you know. And uh, definitely you will discover that it could be verbal abuse, but that child cannot take it because the screaming and the shouting at home, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it is, it is, and it is very, uh, dangerous because the child becomes uh, withdrawn. This is very uh, common and untrusting. You know, he doesn't trust, especially if the the abuse has physical abuse. You know, and uh, and it, he becomes protective towards the siblings. Mm -hmm. You know, just to be the family together. We see so many signs of those children who stick together with yeah. their brothers and sisters afraid for them mm -hmm. because uh, they don't feel safe they're mm -hmm. afraid someone will hurt their brothers and sisters the way they were being hurt because you know the people you trust most are your parents mm -hmm. and when you see a member of your pa parent one of your parents is being abused hit or or uh, you know uh, screamed at that will f make you feel very insecure. Yeah. It also, so how there are little signs like clingy and whiny. Mm -hmm. Anxiety often accompanies a physical se symptom in children who witness domestic violence in the home. Mm -hmm. This, these children harbor uh, always uh, feelings of guilt and shame as well. Mm -hmm. And remember, um, you know, for our audience, we're not just talking about physical abuse. We're talking about all forms of abuse. Um, you know, I got goosebumps as you're, as, you're, as you're reading out that list because, I mean, how many children do we see are aloof? How many children do we know? I remember um, in a very uh, rough patch with my husband many years ago. Today we're great. Um, but I remember the kids complaining of um, stomach problems, like right before they go to bed. Mommy, I can't sleep. My stomach hurts. It was such a common thing, um, and because they're so young, it's a stress that is uh, that is that is really so clear for them. Um, so, for our listeners, this is just really for you to keep an eye out. Uh, you know, today we live in smaller communities. We're definitely tighter. We can definitely see these things. If you're a teacher, if you're if you're um, uh, um, an extracurricular um, activity um, instructor, then. Keep an eye out because this is a lot more often than you think, and um, you know so so the rates are a lot higher. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the ages, uh, Jahanna. So you know, can we can we assume that you know, at a very young age, it doesn't have an effect, or they're like in a different zone, or what kind of ages are are greatly affected? Uh, I would start from the fetus. You know, so how 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 many uh, babies were hurt while still in their in their mom's tummy? You know, in the in the womb by being hit. I know uh, uh, many stories here in Lebanon that I heard of that she was beating while pregnant, and the baby was born prematurely, and really, really not uh, uh, he did not develop. All the the, uh, the organs that he should have, you know, and he had difficulty in breathing, and uh, it starts from in from the babies in the womb, soha, and uh, toddlers. They're always, you know, in the crossfire. When someone is hitting someone else, the child is in the way. Mm -hmm. We cannot even say there isn't an age that is affected, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Children, uh, uh, you know, uh, children of ages that go to school that we just mentioned now, also older children, 
physical effects of wit witnessing the, uh, domestic violence in older children are less evident than behavioral and emotional effects. The trauma that children experience when they witness the, the domestic violence plays a major role in their, in their development and physical well-being, you know. Uh, they will exhibit physical symptoms associated with their behavior or emotional process, such as being withdrawn, as we said, and uh, become, they become non-verbal. You see them that they were bubbly before and then all of a sudden a child doesn't speak, he's shy, he's uh, timid. Uh, it is not the age some people, uh, you know, mentioned that said, okay, it's the age, the age, it's the phase that are going through. No, we have to check deeper, you know. Mm. Uh, they, yes, as I said, anxieties a lot, and then jumpy if they hear a, a door bang, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you feel the child is, these are minor symptoms, but they are major in what is happening to a child's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what is the current situation in Lebanon? Do you feel or have you experienced, you know, with your work in Lebanon, um, are the teachers getting involved? Are they aware? Is this something that has is is on the surface, or is it still, you know, a conversation is that better. is not being spoken yeah. of? Yeah, it is. Sorry, it's much better than before, Soha. But you know, there are many factors in Lebanon that are busy with the economy, the the, the political situation, and the children struggle because. Uh, domestic violence is increasing because of those stresses around, you know. And when you speak with teachers, they tell you, but how can we save them when everything around them and the, the, the institutions are not helping. We don't have institutions to help. Uh, not enough uh, psychologists that deal with those traumas. There are traumas. And the trauma is not uh, something you deal with just uh, with a subject, you know. It's uh, it's a continuous uh, uh, work on them. Yeah. And it is hard. We don't have those facilities here in Lebanon, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and the reality is um, we're all aware. <laughs> We've got sorry. the music playing in the background. I'm sorry, um, I have a phone ringing. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners, what I really wanted to kind of share is, um, and, and, and you hear me say this in every episode, it's not really about, you know, um, knowing all the facts of, of domestic violence. It's about you understanding that you have a role to play, even if it's just energetically. So what I always call for is the stand, is, is to be aware, is to keep an eye out, because these children are not just the children of the parents. They are our children, too. They're the children of the world. So we have a responsibility to protect everybody and um, protect in the way that you know how. So for me personally, my way of protection, uh, I'm not in the, in, 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 in the actual zone, right? So I'm not doing what Johanna is doing. Uh, she's in the zone. That's the way that she's protecting and making a difference. But you can be like what I do, just raise an awareness. Uh, raising awareness so that we energetically can take a stand for the women, uh, for the men, and the children. So, Johanna, let's continue talking about um, the kids and we, what can we do. So, so now we know what the symptoms are, we know what the signs are, we know how they are affected. So if I see this, what can I do? How can I make a difference? Uh... I want to, uh, before I go into that, so I want to mention also teen, teen dating, you know, mm. a lot of abuse and uh, an estimated one-fifth to one-third of teenagers are subject uh, to viewing domestic violence situation, experience teen dating violence. Wow. So what happened is, yes, there are... Uh, uh, they treat each other this way because they have seen the violence at home. Mm -hmm. So it is a vicious circle. It is continuing while growing and to adulthood. Then later on as parents, they do the same as their parents. Mm -hmm. And as you said, uh, ways to help other, uh, what we can do, and every person, you can help your neighbor, you can help children around you. 
intervention is very important somehow. I never knew that before until I learned it and I did some workshops and they taught me that, you know, we always thought if I interfere, I might hurt the child. Mm -hmm. But it's true anyway, he's going to have some beating because if he's being spanked in the mall or in front of others or you hear them as uh, next door neighbors, but when you interfere and say it nicely to the parents that that is not acceptable, at least the child learned this is wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, he wouldn't repeat it. Because we ask sometimes, how come there are two different children and both were abused? Why one did not uh, repeat it to his children and why the other things? This is how I was raised and I believe this is the right thing, although he suffered. It's because someone told the, the child that is not repeating that this is wrong. Yeah. yeah. He suffered, it's true, but he was he was being he, he was made to be aware that this is not acceptable. They are making a mistake, his parents, of behaving like that. You yeah. know, maybe they were also treated this way, but that's the child who has to grow and uh, change the pattern of abuse, yeah. you know. And sometimes it's also a wake-up call for the parents, isn't it? I mean, this is going to sound a bit odd, um, you know, but I, I remember we were living in the Middle East, and in the compound that we were living in, there was a there was a house that was being, that was still under construction, right opposite our house. And, um, and, and this is, you know, like this isn't a country that, doesn't isn't even aware what domestic violence is right so i don't want to mention the country because i don't want it to be about the country but it is very normal to lay your hands on your child it's very normal to kind of re yeah. because it it is it is it is viewed as discipline so i remember walking out and there was this young teenager that was working with his father on the construction site and the father saw that he had done something wrong so he picked up a log of wood and he was beating him up with it so he was hitting him with it so I went up to him and, and I said, what are you doing? Like, you can't possibly be hitting your son. You can't do that. And he said, he actually said to me, Machasik, uh, which means, you know, it's none of your business. Uh, this is between me and my son and I, uh, you know, I have to discipline him. And I said, well, it does, it, it does, it, it is something that is my business because it's happening right in front of me. And I turned around to the son and I said, you should not be accepting this. He should not hit you. And I turned around to the father and I said, you guys can have a conversation. Talk to each other. But, I mean, I, I share that because sometimes we really get caught up in, uh, in our emotions. Because I remember I personally wanted to beat the father up. You know, I'm just like, stop. But you're absolutely right, Johanna. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just repeating it because it is very important that we say whatever comes to us in, in, intuitively. Um, and it will be the right thing. So don't worry about having the right strategy. Just follow your heart. If you see a child that is caught up in something, then go and speak up. And speak up um, at least, if anything, like Johanna, what you're saying, you know, for our viewers, it's very important the child wakes up and understands, no, there is, there is somebody that can stand up for me or, you know, I, um, I can say no to this in, in the best way that they can, you know, hopefully that that will make a difference. Yeah, yeah, totally. Thank yeah. you, Soha, for mentioning. And it's very important. Don't worry. Anyway, the child is going to be scolded at home if you interfere or not. But what we're doing is to make him know that that is wrong for him not to repeat it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, in the in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, the child, what what the child goes on. I want to mention the parentification mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah. This is a, a, a point uh, we see them a lot maybe in, in the Middle East because the elder child always takes care of the younger. Yes. But a lot of time it happens and it is a kind of abuse because the child is losing his childhood uh, uh, years, you know. Like the older uh, son uh, takes, takes the role of being the father of being the sister. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And when parentification is when a child, mostly the, the older or uh, the, the firstborn, is chosen for familiar parenting role. Yeah. 
Mm. Thus, uh, when there is a, a disabled child in the family to be cared for, uh, spe older siblings, especially girls, are at the risk of parentification, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the disadvantage of the cases of parentification is uh, losing one's own childhood, as I said. Mm -hmm. uh, the child in question takes an excessive responsibility in the family without their caretaking being acknowledged. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just taking advantage of a child. Yeah. And there is no support by others. Yeah. yeah, and the child loses his real place, you know, in the family and is left lonely and unsure. Yeah, and I'm sure the other yeah. impacts would be that they... I mean, I've, I've, I've seen boys who have taken on the role of their fathers and uh, they become quite aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. They become yeah. quite aggressive and uh, yeah. Um, okay. So, so what what else can we do? What can we do to uh, to take a stand for for the children that we possibly can see? Are there any yeah. other tips? Yes. Early intervention is one of the best ways to counteract the effects of witnessing uh, domestic abuse. Ways to help the children. Uh, is arrange school age uh, children to receive counseling from professionals at their school. Often school counselors programs to, to teach kids how to extract themselves from dangerous dangerous uh, situations, you know, to help them how to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. There are uh, counselors in school that do that, you know. And we can help children find uh, a loving and supportive adult. Yeah. That is very that important. They can trust. To, yeah. Yes. To introduce to the child and encourage the, the child to spend as much time regularly with the adult. Mm -hmm. You know, someone we trust so that this child can really loosen up and start trusting society. Mm -hmm. uh, this also uh, may include a trusted family member or a community advocate the way we are doing you know mm -hmm. there are groups who take the children outing uh, just to show them the the other side of life that mm -hmm. it's not always uh, abuse you know so so in lebanon they what you do is you take them as a group and then there is a group of adults so it yeah. allows the children to separate from the situation that they're in even yes. if it's just for that moment Yes. And um, and also connect with the other children and most of the adults. So now there becomes a trust factor. Yes. Wow. Okay, yeah. that's pretty yeah. cool. And this is happening in Lebanon. It is happening and in a small, uh, uh, you know, community. Not not expanded, but we're doing. We're trying to do our best to make it happen in all the regions as well. Beautiful. And it is important that. Uh, you know, children start trusting adults, mm -hmm. and we have to be careful who we let those children, you know, uh, we have to provide a safe environment mm -hmm. that does not include violence in mm -hmm. any form, mm -hmm. and uh, doesn't mean, you know, this is to help them develop resilience mm -hmm. uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to life, to the abuse, so that they know how to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a good way to, to find ways to discipline them, because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they could be very aggressive, but it should not involve hitting, name-calling, yelling, you know, or any form of ver ver verbally uh, uh, aggressivity. Behavior, so assertion you know, with love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, they, are, they are beautiful. They are beautiful beings. So they don't deserve to hurt, you mm -hmm. know. And, uh, and I really believe parents don't realize what's happening to them is affecting the children even more because the child feels helpless. He feels responsible. He feels he's the cause of everything because... You know, we spoke before how uh, an abusive father can use the kids to yeah. abuse his wife mm -hmm. by saying, it's your fault, they are not behaving, it's your fault, they are not uh, uh, studying well. And the child always feels guilty. He feels mm -hmm. he's responsible, you know. Yeah. And as it is, the child, um, my understanding is children feel responsible 
irrelevant to what they're experiencing, they always feel responsible for any misery that is being caused in the house. Yes. Um, so anytime that mommy and daddy are not happy, the first thing, especially under eight, the first thing that they'll do is they'll feel that it's because of them. So, you know, the child is always wanting to please. The child is always needing of love and, and reassurance. Um, so just in looking at it from that perspective, it's very true. I think, um, you know, it is, it is, I would, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers are so much larger in terms of looking at how many of us are truly aware of where their place is at, you know, where the children, what they are receiving and how they are reacting to these situations. Uh, yeah. from, from anything from abuse to disconnect. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, are there any other things that we can bring out to our listeners in terms of helping these children? Uh, just be aware, as you said, so how, you know, uh, open your eyes, look around you, don't feel... I am disconnected from what's happening around me. If thing. you save one child, you have done an, an important and uh, amazing job. Mm -hmm. And we can do it. We don't need a specialist for that, just showing love. And if someone, for instance, is, is helping in the studies, if someone is paid to teach that child and, uh, you know, those private uh, tutors, and you see there is something wrong, even even in helping uh, create a sense of safety uh, by s scheduled routines, such as regular meals and homework times, all these chaos that the child goes through, all these cause pain also, because the child feels unsafe, doesn't know what is wrong, what is right in mm -hmm. his life, you know. Mm -hmm. And we have a role. Every person, every one of us has a role to help this child. And the the adult, the adolescents, you know, how many societies are helping also. And they all come from really uh, broken homes. So they do. They do. Yeah. And you don't yeah. need to know what, what's happening in the home. And for anybody that's living in Canada or North America, uh, you know, we do have great support structures. Um, you know, my, my children, my, my son goes to middle school, and it, it breaks my heart to see the the uh, the percentage of girls nowadays that are cutting themselves it's it's just a ridiculous ridiculous number and um, and we personally got involved in an in incidents where a girl was cutting herself so what I'm sharing with you our listeners is get involved with your children you know your children see they 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 talk and um, so for this particular girl had my son not mentioned to me. Uh, that there was something happening to her and had I not gotten involved and all she wanted to know was that there was somebody that actually cared for her um, so in whichever possible way that you can get involved first of all like I always say and this is what we're talking about here we are all responsible we're all responsible for this earth of ours we're responsible for the energy that we are projecting we're responsible for the energy that we can maintain and protect so all of these children you're, we have children they go to school Keep an eye out on what's happening. Watch them. And do whatever it is that you can do, whatever you feel compelled to do. Uh, you don't have to get involved with the authorities. You can have a conversation with the child. You feel too scared to have a conversation with the child. Have a conversation with your own child. Ask, you know, I noticed that this person has been walking alone. Um, do you know if there's anything happening? So get involved. So really, this is our plea. Our plea is, is just open up your eyes. Start there, open up your eyes, be aware, know what is and what isn't, and do whatever it is that you can do to make this world a better place. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Soha. Amazing. And everyone who is listening, we're counting on you to make a difference absolutely. and to make this world a better place. We're getting there. We are getting, getting there. We are getting The world is, it is becoming yeah. a beautiful place. Um, <laughs> So thank you very much uh, for our listeners. Your support is, is just so appreciated. Uh, we have been getting uh, just amazing support and love from communities in Lebanon, in Ghana, um, in, in, in Canada here. So thank you very much. Um, like I always say, please share this uh, or communicate with us. If you have something that you would like to shine light on, then we welcome you. 
um, if you would like to stay anonymous and send us maybe um, an experience or something, or maybe there is something that you need to talk about or or raise um, uh, an eye on, uh, definitely reach out to us. Jahana is still in Lebanon working with the Lebanese Women's Democratic Gathering and uh, and also working with many other associations, uh, just expanding expanding her wings there. So thank you very much, Jahana. We are so appreciative of your work and for everything that the women are doing in Lebanon. Um, and uh, next week we have our, um, I, I believe we have a guest. Yes. So stay tuned. And it's always lovely to listen to guest stories. Uh, predominantly, and I'm going to say this before our guest comes on, predominantly to tell them that we care. Predominantly to tell them that their story was not in vain. That they can go out there and inspire other people to make a difference in their lives and also take a stand for other people. So I love you all. Stay tuned next Thursday and um, have a safe and dry week. <laughs> Thank you, Jana. <laughs> Thank you, Sahar. Have a wonderful week. And all the listeners, please stay safe. We love you. We love you. And happy Mother's Day. On, uh, oh, yes, to you too, yes, to you too, coming up. in Canada. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> okay. Happy Mother's Day to all. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, Sylvie.